So this means that we're still uh, slowly growing into the digital investment, but we're not really where the UK or the US is right now. Like not not even close. We're not we're not even close than to France or Germany. They have a lot higher digital investment than in, than what we do in Spain. Um, there is hope because it's growing. It's been evolving uh, through the last year and two years, I think. Uh, if we, if you if we took a look at these numbers two years ago, it was about 10% average of investment. So we have gone up about 10% in digital investment, and it's going up every year. Digital is already the second media in, in terms of investment after TV. But TV is huge in Spain still, you know, uh, the first media in investment, and we know that all the all, the, all our clients, so all the brands, are investing in TV a lot more than in digital right now. Um, having said that, having said this, what we also see is that when a brand has objectives, KPIs that have to do with online traffic, uh, online registrations, um, anything that has to do with behavior online, these are the clients that are, of course, investing more in 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 digital formats. So this is why insurance, for example, or you know, or even telecoms who already have their businesses um, adapted to the digital world and where you can make a purchase, you can make a business a, a purchase decision online. Those are the businesses that are invest investing more in digital. What happens with in, on the other end? We have for example luxury items. Um, even if they have many of the brands have their digital business, I mean their business is adapted to digital and you can buy luxury items online. They're very, very, very careful with how they treat the brand. And since digital is not controllable, you can't really, you know, control what ads comes after you or, you know, how are you going to be placed on a page or, yeah. They, most of the times, you can buy a brand day, which is what they do, you know. They, they buy very, very specific formats, which is very expensive, and they don't have many, a lot of advertising presence online. This is what, for example, luxury brands are doing because really they, they feel that they can't control how their, their brand is perceived within this environment. Um, also, consumer goods, fashion, these are industries that even if they may have their business adapted to the digital business, for example, fashion, which has been growing in Spain for the last two years, um, they think many times that their targets who are housewives are not you know, ready to make online transactions, so they are not online um, as much as the younger target or men, etc. Et so they don't really are betting on the digital advertising landscape um, as much. Having, having said this, the future is, is looking good. So um, we, we think that, um, as, as uh, Renato said before, every business knows that digital is important. Every marketeer no, I'm not going to say every, but most of them, <laughs> most, most. most of them know that it's it's essential to be to have a presence in the in digital media. So uh, we think that this is going to continue evolving, but but we need to continue evangelize and then yeah, 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 yeah. And this, definitely. And that's one of the barriers. I mean, definitely, uh, there is a lot of work on you know uh, teaching teaching marketing managers marketing heads on how the digital business works how digital advertising works what they can get from it so um, in terms of advertising pie this is kind of where we are on average 20 percent <coughs> some sectors who are who, who, which have the, their business adapted to digital and where we can make digital purchases are about 40 percent this is uh, this is really the the uh, landscape in Spain um, also, when we look at the 40%, it's, it's interesting that because all of these businesses are performance businesses, they are uh, direct response businesses, so most of that 40% is spent on what we call performance display, um, what we call RTV, real-time bidding, mobile, and some search campaigns. So the branding side of the digital advertising, that's, that's the side that we have uh, a lot of trouble pushing, um, really, because uh, the response side is working really well, and and advertisers not advertisers are really using it because it works. But the branding side is is, is the side that we think we need to work a lot more on. So that's the first question. The, the evolution, really, what, what I was saying, two years uh, before, in two years, you know, we have grown about 10% of the best on the investment is in digital. 
the audience is covering a, covering a lot more. So that's what I was saying about the second media is, is internet. And, um, and, and, and this is something that is going to continue growing slowly in Spain. It's taking us our time to, to get there, but uh, it's going to continue growing. In terms of challenges or, or barriers, or why are people not adopting digital as much as in other countries? So I think we have five points, five main things that we have really, you know, uh, as considered challenges in, in, in Abbas. The first one is confusion on, or not knowing or, you know, the need for education. We definitely deal every day with marketing teams that don't really know how the digital world, uh, world works, how, uh, you know, do I have to be on Facebook, do I have to be on Twitter, why? Um, do I have to do display, do I have to, you know, be on mobile but with an app, without an app? And they have all these questions because they really don't know, they're really not... Um, they're very confused about the environment, they, they don't trust it, they, since they don't know, they don't know if, if, if you know, what we are telling them to do is right or not, so really, at that point, it's, it's definitely very important to build trust with the client because um, we face everyday marketing teams that are not ready to advertise in the digital world. And so, lots of education, lots of, uh, you know, trying to prove that advertising works, and, uh, and a lot of testing, because that's the way, that's how, you know, they, they start using it, you know, test, small tests so that we can scale that, that investment a lot more in the future. In a marketing agency, or what we call now marketing agency, we don't really know what it is. When we, uh, we when you talked before, Gonzalo, about uh, the role of the CMO, the, you know, the marketer in the, in the board, I've been hearing the opposite, uh, the opposite story. How now is the CDO, the chief design officer, or the chief experience officer, which is my favorite title ever, uh, the one taking over the boards? People who, who take the marketing or the understanding of marketing in a very holistic way, basically understanding, articulating, orchestrating every single touch point of a proposition of a brand or business or company and their customers. So, Something is happening, and this is, this change between digital formats may meaning understanding new things that are happening all around and trying to use it as a communication tool or device. And what is happening now? There is a, a big leap. There is a big change on how we should understand that. And I like I mean, I come from the world of design, which mm -hmm. so how I am lucky because I have a kind of first person view of how that works and you know this idea of articulation and. I'm just improvising because there is a lot of the topics that we talk about already that I wanted to cover. And I think there's something, the, the video, I mean, everyone is in love with Angela Arendt, the, the, the woman of uh, ex CEO of, of Uber is now doing something marketing, whatever it's called, uh, on, on Apple. And her big discovery, I, I did a, lot of, a little bit of research on, on her uh, brand store in, in London, in Prince Street. And it's just amazing. It's basically the definition of what marketing could be in the future, which is not called marketing anymore, maybe. How do you call that thing? Which is, you get into that, sh that store, and all of a sudden you are surrounded by services, you are surrounded by brand, you are surrounded by usage, you are a customer, you are an individual, you feel, you taste. It's, it's really, really cool. I mean, and the way she did it is um, it's not thinking in terms of formats, it's thinking about in terms of experiences. You go there and you experience the brand. And what she said, one of her quotes, one of my favorites said, I don't care what they buy. I care where they buy, if they buy the brand or not. So the goal of a, of a brandist or, or a CEO of a company or whoever is to help people or encourage people, or inspire people to trust them, to buy a brand, to, to really buy a, a relationship with them. Uh, I, the first thing she did was a business decision, which is very, very interesting from, again, this world we're talking about, about you know, this dichotomy between digital and physical, et cetera, et cetera, the form, et cetera, et cetera, talking about digital is becoming a bit obsolete already. The first thing she did was to, to merge the p &L. So they don't really, it doesn't matter if people buy online or if they buy on the store. In fact, the staff is trained to help people to buy online. If you don't want to take your bikes with you, they will help you out and you buy online, but you do the purchase there, and you get the stuff at home. So that's a big, big change because many, many, many corporations, one of the struggles they have is that uh, even internally, digital is competing with the physical or the traditional businesses. So that's, that's one big thing. The second one is that 
I mean, this is something I spoke with one of the of the staff there, and I she was very you know, very happy. Said, why are you so happy? And I have my iPad here with me. So what is the iPad about? So we have here all the e-commerce. I can take you through the the, the whole purchase process, this and this and that. But also, you know, we have a, a internal Facebook, and it's internal Facebook that in which this Angela lady and the creative director can remember the name. Uh, anyway, they, 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 they were part of it, and every single employee of of Uber is were part of that uh, that uh, social network. Meaning, one of the key things, I mean, one of the the touch points in this case is the direct relationship with the human, with the staff. It was already improved through technology in this case, through a digital tool, which is an internal social network, which made them feel part of something bigger than them. It's this concept of purpose that helps people to feel. Uh, more inspired. So, again, how do you call that thing? How do you call that um, orchestration, again, articulation of experiences? Is that marketing? Is that design? Is that brand experiences? Whatever. And that's uh, somehow where, where, in terms of the, the future of the discipline, this is what we're talking about. And again, we have, in, in the group of companies I work for, we have a lab in which we start exploring, you know, virtual reality. Now with Oculus Reef, wearables, Internet of Things, uh, the whole lot. That scale, uh, that's scale, that's um, <coughs> devices. And I mean, the work is led by complexity, but this multi channel, it's not our form, it's our channels, our platforms, it's about technologies. And, and the core, I mean, the, 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 the focus of a brand is of a CEO, of a CXO, whoever is in charge of a corporation, is to be able to orchestrate that in a coherent, consistent, uh, manner. And, and again, this, this uh, relationship at the end of the day has to be fully articulated is, is shape in the, in, the, in the shape of experience. So the, defining and creating studies around experiences, which is again the way people relate to brands, is key. And the way we use it, for, for example, my own company, what we do, the first thing we did is to hire, uh, in order to understand that, is to hire a writer. We have a script writer. Mm -hmm. Somebody coming from the world of cinema. Yeah. And why? Because we understand that due to this complexity of formats and devices and platforms and everything, what you, the key tool to understand that relationship is through narratives, through storytelling. Mm -hmm. there is, I always put the example of, uh, there is a rom-com, maybe you, you watch it, it's called Friends with Benefits, mm -hmm. with uh, Justin Timberland and, and Mila Kunis, I think so. <laughs> yeah. And it's a funny movie to watch. If you watch the first time, it's just a typical rom-com. If you watch the second time knowing that Sony Pictures is behind it, then it changed completely because you see the whole movie as a support of, of products from Sony. I like to see it the opposite way. I like to see that the products from Sony supports or facilitates that love story. That's, that's how I like to, to understand it. So the guy falls in love, I see the guy saves the, the, the relationship through a Xperia mobile phone. They get super horny, play PlayStation, <laughs> uh, they watch uh, TV in Arabia. Uh, so I like to say Sony was there to facilitate a lot of story. We have to launch Sputniks to the space, hear the, hear the, the, the signals and learn. And learn and change the organization, get back to the, to, the, to the earth and change, get learnings and adapt, change, evolve, etc. No? And design innovation is very important for this and digital ecosystems. Building digital ecosystems because Banks are not banks anymore. Banks are fragments, like kryptonite. They just explode. They have a lot of uh, small uh, financial services that you can use and rebuild in your in your phone. You can have Bank Sabadell, Santander for another thing. You can have PayPal for another. You can have even Facebook payments for another thing different. No. So we started a fascinating journey of self-discovery with them. This is okay. We have this uh, traditional application. Let's start designing as, uh, for, for for the new generation. So for us it was it was funny because. We have to work, break all the silos, all the silos out. We don't have marketing, IT, or whatever. We, we, we all we talk about that. We also uh, have to be creative, just question everything that we know, asking why, no, not saying what, what we are going to do and how we are going to do it. Why are we doing this? Or why not this? No? And try to understand what's the, the real, uh, the real um, interaction that we have with the users. And of course, an inter important thing is what we do in, in, in Fjord. Most of our clients are conspirators or crazy ones. They are not normal people. They want to change. The conspirator is a conspirator because he, do, he does it and he doesn't tell. He has stay okay, I'm doing, connecting with people, they start doing and such, a, a change emerges, no? 
and the, and the crazy one is the guy that says, we have to change the world, we have to change digital. And the people, the, the old people that feel uh, afraid of being fired because digital is a risk for, for, for many, you know, uh, many people, they, they say you're a crazy one. And they try to just to take it away. No? So it's very important, uh, the feeling of a startup, feeling that you are doing something with a small team and, and working. You know? So this is what we, what we get. It's a, Banking as digital natives uh, could imagine. Uh, it has uh, a lot of good numbers, uh, uh, 150k uh, dollars the first month without any, any campaign. Uh, 30 million uh, US dollars in deposits in the first three months, and four stars in Google Play Store. And it was a bank. The people were using it, but it was a bank. And for, for many people, they say that it was one of the most fascinating examples of forward thinking, which is because it's a bank that doesn't look like a bank, no? In a way, it's a new way to interact with your money. So the money is the fuel for your life. It's something that you use, but you don't have to see all the time the numbers or all the things. You want to shop, you don't want to account. You want to uh, travel, you don't want a credit. You want to do things in your life, and money is the fuel for, 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 for getting that. No? So it has a, a, a dashboard which has a, financial, a visual financial status. It's grouped by needs. It's not talking about products. It talks about needs, shopping, interacting, coupons, offers. Uh, piggy bank, whatever, and it's customizable because it has a lot of uh, an internal uh, app store where you can install uh, uh, different different applications, no, to make it yours. It's like a, a normal mobile, so it's a I would say it's a meta mobile phone, meta app store, store no? an app store of app stores, more or less. And the money tag, where you can see in a very graphical way the spendings, advice, top ups, what you can do for sell, and it has you, you can see these small details. I must confess, I don't like the design. <laughs> it's very Turkish, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting metaphor. Not just trying to, to change and, and learn things. To learn a code called BBC Basic in order to write our CVs, which was you couldn't pass the course until you'd written your CV. In it. And um, I spectacularly failed at writing code then. I still had no interest whatsoever in any digital technology. I'm only ever interested in how it gets used between to build a relationship between brands and consumers. So uh, I'm never going to talk about uh, mobile tech or this kind of thing. That's, that's what I'm here for. Uh, brilliant. Okay, <laughs> Felix Bernardi. Um, so I'm Felix Bernardi. Uh, I uh, pretty much accidentally started the sixth uh, specialist uh, web agency in uh, 1994. Um, so I've been doing uh, digital and websites and strategy and so on uh, for 20 odd years. I now uh, lead a, a strategy consultancy, a digital and CRM customer engagement strategy consultancy in London called Underwired. Uh, and we've worked with people like Virgin and ESPN and Procter and & Gamble and Unilever and so on over the years. And we tend to work with very advanced multi-channel uh, strategic thinking. My very first digital experience, I think I, I had a friend who had a watch that he had built with an LED display. It was a red LED display. And I then went on to, to write a clock on an abstract three-line computer in BASIC. And that was the last time that I ever programmed as well. <laughs> Very good. How are you? Oh. Um, I, I would also like to, before I start telling my, my story, to congratulate the, the, the marketing club. Like, it's an amazing event. Congratulations yeah. from, from, you know, from Kevin. Um, so, who am I? I'm uh, a partner at Territorio Creativo. We're a consulting firm that specializes in digital transformation. We're working for brands such as uh, Spotify or Toyota or uh, big banks, big global banks. And it's been over 20 years that I've been working in digital. Like I, now luckily digital is everything, so finally I get to, to speak to the big guys um, at, the, at the important companies. And if I have to go back, I would say that my first digital experience, which is interesting considering I was in Venezuela, I was about 10 or 12 year old boy and I had a Mac. And I remember that day as if it was today. And my latest one is I got my new Fitbit last week. And my goal now is you know, to get in shape, to run more, to walk more, to move my butt. All right? Okay, so let's see if we can move your butt on the panel as well. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm Juan. I'm uh, the CEO for Spain of uh, Cabify. In case you don't know Cabify, it's a private driver service. You can 
someone via your mobile phone and it's uh, really low priced and high quality and um, we started the business like two years ago um, I joined in 2013 and then after uh, before that I was uh, I was uh, in finance I was working in finance um, my first digital revolution I, I, I won't say experience because uh, I mean I, I have bigger brothers so uh, digital has been I mean in my life is since I was like four so my first digital revolution was uh, the internet uh, I, I remember it was probably 96 I was 14 and then you had this thing where you can connect you can talk to a guy who lives in in, in Singapore or, or, or wherever and it was really exciting and um, looking back it's like almost I mean 15 to 20 years ago and, and everything has changed now with mobile phones and I mean you, you're all the time progressing and, and advancing it's, it's amazing so. Let's uh, have a look at the brands. You know, brands are having a big challenge in, in defining what the digital revolution is. And I'd like to ask the first question over to Laurence. I mean, in theory, are they really going for a digital revolution or, or are they actually undergoing like a superficial digital transformation um, and primarily also driven by the customers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think the revolution comes from the users really because uh, they are actually where had the brands or the companies. <laughs> I think the, the, the users are so different than what the, the consumers so different than what they were like uh, five years ago just because of technology and how fast everything is evolutioning uh, recently. Like think about the last 20 years now we are at 2.5 billion internet users and in a few years, a couple of years we'll be at five and by the end of the decade everybody will be connected somehow. Uh, whether it's through desktop, mobile, but there are so a lot of project now to connect a lot of uh, rural places everywhere. So every, let's say let's say that everybody will be connected. So that is changing completely the users because and and the consumers because now with technology they can actually interact completely with with the brand. And I think now what's happening is that the the brand are really in trying to understand how they can how they can lever that how they can talk and what should be their story and how should <coughs> How can they lever the technology? Because what I've been trying really to do so far is more like uh, adapting to the technology, the same story, right? So I think this is an introduction, and this is recently we talk a lot about like the users and what they are, and I think it's more about like connectivity. It's about the fact that the users know they produce, they are creators, they also curate what they do, and they send it to their friends, and they are very connected to communities. So that's why we always talk a lot recently about four C's, which is kind of forgetting about the, pre the previous marketing concept, right? About four P's, etc. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you know, Felix, you've been in business for quite a while. Um, you're, let's say the old world of digital revolutions. Um, <laughs> could you give us a, 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 one of your worst, worst examples of a bad digital revolution? Have you got anyone uh, back? <laughs> um, there are plenty. I think one of the problems is that um, when companies approach di digital who come from an old school pre-digital background, especially retailers, the, the, they tend to add blocks of new marketing specialisms uh, as silos. So uh, 20 years ago, uh, technology came into business and people started spending three million pounds or three million euros on a piece of technology that would allow them to house all of their data and do what they called CRM. Um, then you had uh, the, the web rev revolution and e-commerce revolutions, and you had whole departments added on to their marketing department that did uh, websites and then e-commerce. And, and the problem is that all of these things are, are great when you look at them on their, own, on their own, but when you start adding them together, you end up with a series of silos. And so most companies today have siloed marketing departments. They have a head of e-commerce, they have a head of email, they have a head of mobile. Uh, now everybody's got a head of social. And what they fail to do is talk to each other. And actually when you are a business that wants to sell more stuff to your customers, the primary focus has to be the customer. And the customer doesn't care whether they've jumped from a website to a mobile device, they're just living their life. And so you get huge companies organized around these massive silos 
with agencies that then do three million pounds worth of mobile, but the agency doesn't talk to the uh, the other agency that does three million pounds of, of email, for example. Um, and so you get these horrible inefficiencies. Uh, and there are companies, huge supermarkets, for example, in the UK, we have uh, the, the UK's <coughs> largest uh, supermarket, which has just got itself into deep, deep financial trouble, basically because uh, they talk about multi-channel, but they don't practice it. What they do is they have the world's best direct marketing program, they have the world's best CRM program, they have the world's best mobile program, but they don't talk to each other. Talk and the Tesco's? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and, and they have the capability, they have the infrastructure to be able to get their customers, to talk to their customers at every moment. The customer actually has currently the capability of talking to the driver who is delivering their home shopping. They have the capability to actually talk to the person who picks the fruit and say, I don't want ripe bananas, I want unripe bananas, or I want, uh, you know, big lettuce, not little lettuce. They have that capability, but they don't build that into their marketing framework or their marketing structure. So what, what happens is that the customer gets lost in a whole <coughs> bunch of marketing programs in different silos, and we forget that actually what we've got to do is build a relationship with the customer and meet the customer where they are. And so you have this fantastic, sophisticated organization with these fantastic, sophisticated silo programs, um, and then they have competitors who say, do you know what, stuff all that, far too expensive, far too complicated, will focus on making sure that the fruit is fresh in the store. And they don't have this digital marketing programs, and they are <coughs> overtaking rapidly Tesco, so Aldi, Lidl, the German uh, supermarkets, shooting up in terms of uh, customer engagement, customer satisfaction scores, and people like Tesco who's got this massive investment in all of these great digital marketing technologies falling over because they just don't talk to each other. Maybe for <coughs> example, who knows Nike Plus? Who uses it? Why? Well, why do you use Nike Plus? Because I like Nike. Ah, okay. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. Okay, so what was, what was the purpose of Nike Plus? I mean, that was their digital revolution, wasn't it? It helped me mo motivating myself uh -huh. for making sport. Right, so it gave you a bit of a sort of like engagement, it helped you develop running, you wanted to go and have a goal of 10 kilometers. Why do you think Beat Nike... Beat yourself. Beat yourself, okay. I mean, this is a perfect example. I mean, I used to work for Adidas as well. I like taking Nike apart, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I will still do that. I still wear stripes in my shoes. But look, look at this example. They revolutionized this kind of like track and trace your running with Apple pretty early. So that was a pretty good revolution, how a handset and your running shoes starts motivating you to get your ass out of the sofa and start moving, right? Now, where Nike as well just worked in Zylos, that was a good campaign, a marketing campaign, to get people moving together. First communities, they had the Nike runs together, you had the, uh, um, the Bomberis races in Barcelona, etc. But one thing they always miss out on, and still haven't done, and I criticize my own ex company as well, is they didn't get the connect between care and also sell using Nike Plus. Why did they do that? If they would have collected more information on yourself, like your shoe, when's your last purchase, what is your running goal? They start tracking how much you run. Maybe after 150 kilometers, they'll tell you, hey, look at your soul, it looks like shit, buy a pair of shoes. And this is what you're seeing. This is a disconnect that all these big brands have been undergoing and still haven't caught up, that you have to concentrate on content, on care, and on commerce, and bring it together in a digital revolution. That's another bad example, but that's because I was ex Adidas. So, Kevin, maybe from your side, um, do you have some good examples of a digital revolution? Um, yes, luckily I have a lot of examples. <laughs> um, and another thing I want to say to you guys, I'm sorry that I you know, skipped the question, or that I don't pay attention to your, to your, and to your question immediately. Make sure that when you go out there and you start working, that you have fun, that you be bold, that you make decisions fast. Don't, don't have fear about the failures. In the digital revolution, in the marketing revolution, one of the good things is that you can fail fast. You can fail with very little budgets, and it doesn't really matter. You still have a chance to take it to the next level. As a good example, going to your question, and I hope everybody agrees that um, this is one of the beauties, that they have to be bold and they have to 
make a lot of decisions and move fast. As a good example, one that I'm especially proud of in, in terms of how innovative they've been is a telecom <coughs> operator in the UK. It's called GIFGAF. How many of you know GIFGAF? What's, what's so cool about GIFGAF in terms of how they're engaging their consumer? How they have reinvented their model completely? They have, they're co-creating their products. They're asking their customers to, to invent things for them, to create contents. And when you see a company that is bold, when you see a company that decides to create completely different strategies and that generates business results, it's generating the highest net promoter score in the UK <coughs> in the telecom sector. It has the lowest cost of acquisition in the UK. It is the best player in terms of digital experience and they, they don't do it. They have asked their community, their consumers, their people to do it for them.